Hi to everybody. <clears throat> Hope you're having a happy Sunday. I know some of you have finished school this week, those of you that have been in school. Um, I hope that all went well and that's the beginning of the official summer holiday. Um, we've been looking at this amazing story of George Muller and we've been looking at the story that Jesus told about the heart and um, we do this story of the parable of the sower every year in flame because I think it is such an important story um, because I feel in many ways it's been the story of my own spiritual journey and in the final one we do next week I'm going to share a little bit about that. I don't know if you remember in the story, there were huge crowds gathering when Jesus told this story. Vast multitudes, it said, thousands of people on the shores of Lake Galilee. And Jesus gets into the boat because of the crush of the people. And he opens his mouth and he uh, begins to tell this amazing story. A sower went out to sow the seed. Talks about the four soils. You're probably getting to know them now. The hard place where no, there was no soil and the birds came and the seed got trampled on. Talked about the stony soil where there's a little bit of soil. The seedlings come up and the sun beats down and they give up. And then we talked about the weeds, how the seedlings try to grow up, but the weeds overpower them. And then we have, thank goodness, as we said, we have this wonderful good soil where a harvest can come. And at the end, Jesus lifts up his voice and right across the vast crowd, he calls out, listen, listen to me. If you've got ears, hear what I'm saying to you. We've talked about how this story in many ways is, has different layers to it. Some, in some ways this story is for those who are not yet Christians and yet in another way it's for those of us who are Christians. We talked about how Jesus explained it to the disciples and said that the seed, this tiny little seed is the word of God, that it, with, it has huge power to become a little apple seed, can become an apple tree, an acorn, an oak tree. How extraordinary that in these tiny little things there's power. We talked about how the words of God and even Jesus himself, as it were, entering into our hearts can cause extraordinary things, powerful changes to come. Talked about the hard path, which is when our hearts become hard with these wrong attitudes. Um, I've been particularly struck about our need to forgive. Whenever I pray now, Lord, forgive my sins, I pray the whole of the sentence that Jesus gave us. I pray, forgive my sins as I forgive those who sinned against me. Those two sentences, that's one sentence. You can't have one half without the other half. We must pray those two things together. And when we hold these things against other people, when we hold judgments, when we're angry and selfish and have wrong attitudes, our hearts are like that hard path and this powerful word can't come in. And then we talked about last week about the stony soil and these times of trouble. And Jesus said, when these times come, don't turn away, don't turn away, don't give up like they gave up. And how George Muller turned towards God when things were difficult, not away. Sometimes when there's the crisis and things go wrong, we, we just want to turn away and think, well, I'll sort this out myself. And the Bible teaches us not to do that. And then some of the seeds fall among the weeds. Oh dear. These are the things that crowd out and choke the life of God in our hearts. And incredibly, Jesus lists the three things. He lists these things. And what's incredible is how well God knows the hearts of men, how well God knows my own heart, uh, that he would list these three things. They're the same today as they were 2,000 years ago when Jesus told the story. He said, the weeds in our hearts are the cares of this life. This is worrying and being anxious uh, about um, our families, about our money, about our work, about our health. These are, these are anxieties, being over-occupied with them. The second thing he talked about was the love and the wrong occupation of, with money. Um, he 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 knew as well that people can be think that money is their security money is the will bring them happiness and we know that that's not true and then the last one he talked about is the love of other things the desire for other things um this is so real that the desire to pick up the phone and play the game the desire to turn on the tv the desire to do anything other than turn our hearts towards god and we know that muller george muller himself he had loved money um, as a young man and he had longed for other things and not for God 
um, and, and he had allowed God to come and take these weeds out. He'd realized, like Bethany talked about last week, that there is no other stream that can satisfy our hearts. He called God the soul satisfying God. And so he had allowed God, like in our picture of the person coming and pulling the weeds out, he'd allowed God to come as the gardener and pull out the weeds. Um, And that's what we want to do. We want to say, God, would you come and take these things out from my heart so that my heart can become good soil? Again, let me encourage you to pray that prayer. Even the young ones in flame, it's such a simple prayer. Lord, make my heart good soil. I've been praying it as I walk to and from work this week. Over and over, I found myself praying this prayer. Let's just close our eyes and let's just pray it again. Lord, we worship you that you are the soul satisfying God, that there is no other stream. There is nowhere else that man can go to to find this living water. And we pray to you today, Lord, would you work in our hearts? Would you make our hearts good soil? Amen.